How's it going my fellow aviators and welcome to the first summary of all of the aviation news which has occurred in 2019. So let's kick things off. Unfortunately, on New Year's Eve, a pilot by the name of Mike Lomberg was killed in Thailand on a round-world journey starting and ending in Geneva. He died after crashing while trying to land in Thailand and people who witnessed the incident said that he was approaching the runway before suddenly veering to the left and disappearing into the nearby trees. Now his entire mission was to show the people of the world that those with physical disabilities can also go on to achieving their goals and also their dreams. I don't know about you but I believe that he deserves the wall of honour. There are very few people who actually go and chase their dreams while being stricken with a disease and also a disability. And the fact that he did what his heart told him to do is a testimony to how much of an extraordinary man he was. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family. Now on Tuesday, the ICAO announced that 4.3 billion passengers flew on airlines in 2018, which is an increase of 6.1% from last year, proving that despite oil prices rising for most of the year, the aviation industry is still growing fast. However, the growth was a slowdown from 7.9%, which was achieved between 2016 and also 2017. We also got to see Air Senegal's first Airbus A330-900neo emerging from the Airbus paint shop. The airline has ordered two of the A330neos all the way back in December 2017 and they're expected to take delivery of their new plane within the next few weeks. This will be a great milestone for the African market and I can also expect a lot of people will be proud of this achievement. So we know that Qatar Airways and China Southern Airlines have a strong relationship with Qatar Airways seeing China as a great market to expand and also explore. Well, this relationship has only gotten stronger because Qatar Airways has taken a 5% shareholding in a Chinese airline. Hopefully, this will give both of the airlines many opportunities to work together and build a long-term relationship. It seems like Qatar Airways is attempting to conquer the world with all of these investments. So, if you're a fan of the Airbus A321LR, then you're going to be very happy to hear that JetBlue are considering ordering a large bunch of the planes for their fleet. It's not clear exactly when, but the CEO will make a decision on the plane in 2019, almost three years after they took up the option of converting some of their deliveries to the long-range variant. They also haven't revealed on what routes they'll most likely use their plane on, but they have hinted at the idea of launching transatlantic services to Europe from their focus cities in Boston and also New York. London is the largest destination from Boston that JetBlue currently does not serve, so we could see them popping up in the British market, we'll just have to wait and see. So on Wednesday, Jet Airways saw a sign of relief as fuel prices were cut by 14.7%, which is the biggest cut since the 2008 financial crisis. We know that India has many domestic airlines and since 40% of the expenses of the domestic airlines is fuel, their expenses have been reduced by over 5%. Boeing is also expecting that fuel prices will remain around $60 a barrel in 2019. Lufthansa has announced that they're going to be hiring 5,000 employees from Germany, Austria, Switzerland and also Belgium in 2019. And this includes openings in Lufthansa, Lufthansa Technik and also Swiss. There are openings for 600 IT specialists and 400 junior employees. So guys, if you're interested in getting into the aviation industry, they have apprenticeships also. So I would encourage you to apply if you're interested in Lufthansa. So we know that Tony Fernandez is a giant within the Far Eastern market. Well, he says that 2019 is going to be a very successful year for the low cost long haul market. Apparently, he's been working very hard to cut out the unnecessary routes, renegotiated aircraft leases, increase the utilization and cut their spending costs. He also says that the year ahead will see the airline make a push into developing markets and describes the next decade as super exciting with the delivery of their new Airbus A330neos and also the A321LRs. There's also news that he's considering converting some of his A330neo orders to the smaller A321LR. It's still early days at the moment, but him and his management team are currently studying the prospects of adding the A321LR. We could hear an announcement in the near future regarding this, but to be honest, who knows. So Thursday saw some exciting news. Delta has been named as the world's most on-time airline in 2018. This marks the second year running that Delta has topped the rankings with 86% of their flights on time, which is an improvement of 0.19% on 2017. 
In second place was Qatar Airways with 85% and in third place was KLM. Now JetBlue's founder Neilman has confirmed his order for 60 A22300s for his startup airline Moxie which was made at the Farnborough Air Show last year. He's also indicated that he's taken options for the further 60 of the planes and the A220s will replace JetBlue's fleet of 60 Embraer 190s. We'll have to wait and see how the airline grows over the next few years and whether it'll be a success. Unfortunate news, an Ethiopian airline 737800 has suffered a runway excursion on Thursday at Uganda. There were no injuries to the 139 passengers and crew on board. ET338 overshot the runway at 12.41am, according to the Civil Aviation Authority. The incident caused no damage to the plane and it was towed to the ramp. Moving on to Friday which was yesterday, you're now able to fly from Vietnam to New York in business class for $675 with Cathay Pacific. Guys, I'm really serious about this. Cathay Pacific is to honour a mistake made in their fares and allow passengers to fly on a 95% discount. This trip normally has a cost of $16,000 and we'll have to wait and see if Sam Chewy is on one of these flights. I've already made a video regarding this but the co-founder of Southwest Airlines has unfortunately passed away. Now Southwest pioneered the point-to-point -point business model which avoided the hubs used by major carriers. Mr Kelleher also decided to stick with a single type fleet the 737 to simplify their logistics and also their crewing. Their no seat assignment policy, facilitated with 20 minute turnarounds, saw the airline to grow into one of the biggest with the help of the amazing man Mr Kelleher. Again, our thoughts and prayers are with his family. A Chinese airline which goes by the name of Genghis Khan Airlines is getting one step closer to their launch day as they're currently in the process of applying for their business license. The airline which is owned by Inner Mongolia Aviation Tourism Investment will operate domestic regional routes and also cargo services out of Baita International Airport. On their website, they have a target to launch operations in early 2019. So, some funny and embarrassing news, Pakistan International Airlines has ordered their cabin crew to lose their excess weight within 6 months or risk being grounded. It seems that the cabin crew of PIA have all had a new year's resolution chosen for them. A woman who is 170cm tall is expected to weigh between 60 and 66kg. The airline has reportedly seen complaints about obese crew and having flown with them countless times, I can't tell you that their cabin crew are really fat. Qantas has been named the world's safest airline and I'm sure to the happiness of my good Australian friend. It's the fifth time that the airline has led the rankings and other airlines in the top 20 include Air New Zealand, ANA, British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Emirates and many others. And finally, some amazing news, we saw the first 777X being fitted with its GE9X engines. We're getting ever closer to the first test flight of the 777X which is expected to be in February. But don't hold me on to that because I'm not 100% sure, it is a strong rumour which I've been hearing. If you thought that the GE90 engines were huge, well the GE9X is even bigger and I'm sure it's going to wet the pants of many aviators. So there you go captains, that was all of the aviation news which appeared for this week. Some interesting news and some saddening news, it's just how the world works unfortunately but never despair. As always guys, do leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, like and subscribe for more aviation videos and I hope to catch you guys very soon.